see you think I'm preaching in public now honey this is nothing more than a recital from what I do in private and thank you for joining us here at All Nations Worship Assembly of Memphis. I'm Pastor Keandra, and as you're coming in, we want you to click like, click share, and tag a friend. We'd also invite you to follow us on all of our social media platforms. That's Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And also, if you would like to connect with us, you can do so by texting the word CONNECT to 77411. There'll be multiple opportunities throughout the service for you to partner with us in giving by texting A-N-W-A, M-E-M to 77977. Let's go into service. Oh God, this shout. Lift your voices and give him glory. Magnify him. He's a great God. He's omnipresent. Come on. Lift your voices right there. Father, we bless you. This shout is for you. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory. We will bless you at all times. And all times we'll bless you. Continuously we'll bless you. In the good, we'll bless you. In the bad, we'll bless you. Father, we lift you high in this place. There is nobody like you. We bless you. And we honor you. Come on, come on. Just a little while longer. Open up your mouth and give it to him. Give him what's due him. Come on. He's good. Come on. He's a good God and we bless you. Hallelujah. We love you in this place. We give you glory. Come on. Let's praise him. Hey.
Jesus. Your Lord, I love you. I will bless you. I will bless you. Come what will. Come what may. My answer is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got a made up now. 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 Deserve it. Why? Because you're awesome. Why? Because you're holy. Why? Because you're great. Why? Because you're mighty. I bless your name. I bless your name. What did you come to your service for? Did you come to point a finger? I need somebody that came to bless him. I came to bless him. Just say he's been good and he's been kind. Put that in the comments really quick. He's been better to me than I have been to myself. He's kind and he is consistent. God bless you. I am grateful that you are here worshiping with us this evening. And I just believe that God is going to say something to you that's going to shift you into the next trajectory of your life. We just believe and receive that what God is doing is something that is going to last forever and that you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Amen. So we're getting ready to go into a, an extended time of worship. Get your tithe, get your offering together. I want to make sure that you have an opportunity to give into the kingdom of God. You can text 77977-ANWAMEM. Get your tithe, get your offering, and we are getting ready to give into the kingdom of God. And I just believe good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will men give into your bosom. And so uh, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, and God is not going to start today. 
and we just believe that you're going to get everything that you have been believing for and we sow in confidence on that belief system that God always holds true to his word in his covenantal rights and as we come into covenant in our finances we create the space and opportunity for God to do what only he can all right so get your tithe get your offering together 77977 a n w a m e m again that is 77977 a n w a m e m all right let's give father thank you you are consistent you are kind and you are not going to break your resume because of my recession do what you do best and show up before the sun comes up in jesus name amen all right uh we're going to continue in our series entitled dwell and uh if you were with us this morning uh, just the power of God, the presence of the Lord began to move on our moment. And uh, I just believe that this is a very special and a necessary series as we begin to transition into the word of God. It's a necessary series. And we talked about the power of the minstrel and we talked about the power of the singer and we talked about the, the prophesying minstrel and the pro prophetic singers. And we talked about the power of the Ark of the Covenant. We talked about David's tabernacle and how he created a space for God and how he moved that in. And then we skipped over to Acts 15 and how we found out that the tabernacle of David really is the church and how it transitioned and shifted in between covenants from old covenant into new covenant. And the way that we found that is that we saw that the veil was not even present in the tabernacle of David, which means that there was access. There was not an outer court and an inner court. That was not necessary. And neither were the ceremonial laws in order for the Gentiles to be saved, which is you and I, that now we can have access to salvation through what Jesus paid for us on Calvary's cross. And, uh, and so now I'm going to give you some detailed information about how the ark was lost. David had to go and get the ark. And I left that part out because I really wanted to dive into this word tonight here briefly and give you what I believe the heartbeat of God is uh, concerning these moments and, and these opportunities for us to move forward in him. All right. So let's go to first Samuel chapter four, first, first Samuel chapter four, verse four. Here's what it says. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from there the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts who dwells between the cherubim. That's the mercy seat. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were, were there and the ark of the covenant of God. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp of Israel, they shouted loudly and the earth did shake. And now when the Philistines heard the noise of the shouting, they said to one another, why does the sound of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews mean? What does it mean? And then they understood that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp. Verse 7. So the Philistines were afraid. Everybody put in the comments, afraid, afraid, afraid. The Philistines were afraid of the Ark of the Covenant because they knew and they said to themselves that God has come into the camp. That's the power of the Ark of the Covenant. It strikes fear into your adversary. And so they said, God has come into the camp. And they said, woe is us, for such a thing has never happened before. God had presented himself in such a way that they had never seen God like that. Verse 8, woe is to us who will deliver us from the hand of this mighty God, these mighty gods. These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with the plagues in the wilderness. The enemy is remembering God's resume. Verse 9, be strong, watch what they say to each other, be strong, conduct yourselves like men. You Philistines, that you do not become servants of the Hebrews as they have been to you. Conduct yourselves as men. This is the enemy giving each other a pep talk. Verse 10. So the, so the Philistines fought and Israel was defeated and every man fled to his tent. And there was a great slaughter and there fell that day Israel 30,000 foot soldiers. Verse 11 is important. And also... The ark of God was captured, and the sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas, they did die. Skip down to verse 18. It's important. And then it happened that when they made mention of the ark of God, that Eli fell off of his back seat, and he fell and at the side of the gate, and his neck was broken, and he died, for he was a man of old age, and he was heavy. 
and he judged Israel for 40 years. For the next few moments, uh, 27 and a half to be exact, I'm going to preach a message entitled, He Has to Give It Back. Can you put that in the comments? He has to give it back. He has to give it back. And before I can get you to the give back, I need to take you about to what happened to how the children of Israel lost their grip on the ark. We find here that the ark finds itself under Eli's uh, oversight. And Eli is a man who was monitoring the temple. He was one who was allowed to be in the presence of the Lord. And Eli has sons. His sons were Hophni and Phinehas. And Eli's sons had become extremely corrupt. They, they were savage sons. And, and, and there was a lazy Eli, and he had savage sons. And these sons, they did not, number one, they did not know Jehovah. And they were serving uh, amongst the people and the children of Israel. And they were serving amongst God's people, but they did not know Jehovah. Uh, they, they were sons, they were savages, and their daddy was familiar with God. But some way in the bloodline, when it came time for them to come into prominence, they did not know Jehovah. And you say, Pastor Brandon, why do you keep saying that? Because it's a dangerous thing to be in leadership and not know the God that you serve. It's a, it's a scary thing to try to instruct people on behalf of a God that you have not spoken with. I'm going to move on from that. And they did not know Jehovah. They did not know their legal rights. They did not know that what they had access to as a priest. They did not know and understand what they were supposed to take for their own and what they were supposed to leave behind. They took flesh that was not for them. And you can see in Leviticus 8 and 31 and Chronicles 35 and 13 that it will tell you what their portion was. But for whatever reason, they did not pay enough attention to detail about what their job description was. Can I just stop right there and encourage you that many of you have a God-given assignment, but if you don't start to dig into that thing and kind of find out what God has called you to do and where he's called you to go and the extent of your rulership and the things that God is going to allow and permit you to do in the partnership of the teamwork of the gospel of Jesus Christ you could accidentally slide over into error thinking that you need to have your moment and your light to shine and you could miss up and mess up things that you were not designed to do and so the, the sons of Eli Hophni and Phinehas they found themselves in conflict over what was for them and what was not put that in the comments don't be in conflict conflict over what's for you and what's for not. First Samuel begins to tell us, first Samuel chapter three gives us more insight as we begin to find that Eli and Samuel now find themselves in the house of God. They're in the tabernacle and the Bible gives us clear information that they find themselves uh, close to the ark of God as the very classic theme is about to play out as God is about to send his clarion call down to Samuel. Now here is the indictment that I need you to catch. The indictment is this, God is about to bypass Eli and speak to Samuel. Please catch that. God is about to bypass Eli and he's about to speak to Samuel. Here is why Eli cannot be trusted. Your Bible says that his eyes are growing dim. His eyes are growing dim, meaning he is not able to see with the sharpness as he once was. I believe that that is a prophetic picture of, of what is happening to Eli. His senses are dull as his eyes are going dim in the natural, so it is that his eyes are going dim in the spirit. That is not the only thing that we need to take note of. The word of God tells us very clearly that not only did Eli's eyes go dim, but the candles is, are beginning to burn out. They're beginning to go out. And you understand that a part of the covenantal right and a part of the expectation that the lamp is not supposed to go out. It's supposed to always burn. Exodus 27 and 20. It's supposed to be continually burning, which means that there was supposed to be a dresser of the lamp Eli who was supposed to notice when the flame is flickering and he's supposed to come and he's supposed to dress the lamp and he's supposed to re-pour the oil and he's supposed to make sure that the lamp stays consistent and able to burn with the fire that is put on it but because his eyes are dim he cannot perceive that there is no light in the house of God father help us that we would have men and women 
women of God that would be able to understand when the light is going dim. Hallelujah. Give us moments, God, where we are not so afraid of conflict and we are not so afraid of the popularity contest on social media that we would abandon our priestly rights and opportunities and obligations to make sure that your fire stays in the house of God. And so we see here that Eli finds himself in a rare opportunity. He, he's, he's, he's about to transition out and he doesn't even notice. And what an indictment when God gets ready to transition you out and you not even know it. It, it. it is a painful thing to be in the same house, bunk bedding with what's next. It's as if God bypasses the familiar to speak to the future. And, and I want you to pay close attention to that because God decides to call Samuel with an audible voice that only Samuel can hear. I'm, I'm trying to present to you the type of conflict that you might be in that the God that you serve Serve can speak to you loud enough for you to hear and your neighbor not even notice. God has such a way with the articulation and the strength of his own voice that when he has a destination for his voice to reach, he can touch somebody that is paying attention to him and completely bypass somebody sitting on your same row or on your same couch or sleeping in your same bed or somebody at your same cubicle. God just has a way of throwing his voice to those that are receptive and ready to hear and and because all of these moments are happening in the house of God I can imagine that God decides to clear his throat and he says Samuel and Samuel gets up and he goes to Eli and he says did you call me and Eli says no nah, fam go back to bed and he and then goes back to sleep and he lays down and Samuel hears the voice again Samuel and he gets up and he says Eli you called me and Eli said no I did not call you you understand one more time he tells him to go back and lay down and he says but this time when you hear it you need to say speak Lord your servant is listening here is why all of that is important Samuel had a revelation of the voice of God because of his conscience he was connected to God he was in the infancy stage your Bible says he was a boy and many theologians believe he was around the age of 12 he was he was at a state and an opportunity of accountability which means he had the conscience to hear God he was not seared he was not blind he was not deaf he had not been exposed he was not hanging out with Hophni and Phineas. he was protected he stayed close to the ark of God and in doing so his conscience was not seared he was not separated from the mandate of God by proximity because of who he was connected to all I'm trying to say is is that I could be next to an Eli and still hear God carefully and close and let me just encourage some of you that feel like you might be in bad situations and you're wondering if God won't come visit you because of how close you are to something bad and I can tell you that when God gets ready to put his hand on you and God gets ready to move upon you it doesn't matter what is standing in opposition rebellion and disobedience to him he will come and speak to you and gather you and move you and shift you and shake you for the next assignment and he says go back to bed and when God speaks to you again if it's him say speak Lord your servant is listening and now the revelation that God wants to reveal to his voice because remember the word of the Lord was rare it was almost non-existent because God didn't want to talk to Eli no more and he said when God speaks to you you're going to know by saying it's your servant and as he begins to announce your servant is listening pause the only way you get the continued conversation is at the pause of servanthood not being uppity and not being puffed up and not trying to be the best and the brightest and not being in a competitive mode but when God calls you he is looking for servants and so we find here that Samuel says speak Lord your servant is listening and God begins to reveal to him the next set of instructions put that in your comments God reveals instructions to servants 
And we see here that as God begins to reveal the instructions of what's next, and he begins to outlay and, and talk to Samuel about the shift that is coming, he begins to tell him that, that the boys are about to be done, and they have blasphemed, and they have done all these sins that are abomination before me. And I'm done with Eli. I don't want to talk to him anymore either. And Eli says, come back in here, Sam. You got to tell me everything that God is saying. And, and Samuel stands up, and he speaks truth to power. And he does so under the anointing of God to announce judgment to the house of Eli. I just have a, a, a sneaky suspicion that God is about to just disconnect you from anything that is blind. Maybe your addiction makes you blind and maybe your moments of frustration make you blind. Anything that is not giving you access to what's next in the spirit, I believe God is about to bring a strong divide. And so we see now how the ark is being separated because you understand that the ark is the most powerful force upon the earth it is literally the throne of god you understand that ark has gold it has shittim wood it has gold that is divinity that is humanity all represented in one box you understand inside of that box is aaron's rod that budded it is the ten commandments the decalogue and then it is also the manna that did not sour in the golden pot and mixed on top of all of that is a lid that has two cherubim facing each other covering the mercy seat it's all in gold represented in three parts meaning God is all one and he has three facets to who he is as well that ark is the most powerful substance how in the world could the ark of God be taken from the children of Israel if the most powerful thing on the planet was in their possession I'll tell you how your Bible says that when the Philistines came into war against them that Hophni and Phineas were with the ark you got to be careful help me holy ghost that if you don't see the kind of power that what is being preached and told to you if you don't see the kind of moving of the waters that you see in your bible if you don't see the kind of transition and shifting that you should see if you don't see the kind of manifested miracles that you've heard about and something is moving you got to make sure that you're not connected to a Hophni and a Phineas and before you start looking for anything with a clergy collar on I want you to just check around your house and look for some Hophni's and Phineas. And why don't you go through your contact list and maybe if you're not seeing the kind of anointing and you're not seeing the kind of power and you're not seeing the kind of manifestation that you're hoping for, maybe you connected to a Hophni and Phineas. Anything that is in rebellion and disobedience and you think that you can still stay in covenant with it and it not get on you, I got good news for you. That if you don't separate yourself, I know this sounds like an old message, but if you don't find a way to separate yourself from the things that are trying to come against God's moving and his power you're going to get in the kind of fight that you should win and find out that you're about to lose what an indictment upon those boys those savage sons that they would have the power of God and they would make their way into a battle and God would let them fight by themselves you understand that they got ready to shake themselves with a traditional shout and they got ready to shake themselves with a prayer is breaking all of a sudden the ground began to shake and the ground began to shift because the praisers had the power of God with them and for a slight moment pastor Sam that power of God on the inside of that praise it shook the ground so much that it made the enemy nervous the Philistines began to talk back and forth to each other and they said that glory has showed up and that power is beginning to move and there is a shifting under this foundation of our own feet and all of a sudden instead of just scaring the enemy the enemy began to encourage themselves and they said shake yourselves and conduct yourselves as men and we better bind ourselves close together or you will become slaves to them like they were to us now this is a problem that the praisers could not get the kind of victory necessary because of what was leading the charge did not encounter God it only wanted to show up when it was in public intoxication you ain't gonna say nothing I said that they held the praise break in front of
front of the battle, but they did not worship and honor God in private. I'm trying to give you inside information that if God is the greatest power and he never will be defeated and you are suffering defeat in your life, it might be because you just quoting it inside of a building, but you ain't experienced it by yourself. I think I got a sneaky suspicion that a part of this quarantine might be because God does not want you to get inside of another battle that he might have to let you lose because you calling on a name that you ain't experienced on your own. And so we see here that, that there is a conflict and they get to the battle and now they're, they're wrestling and they're, 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 there is confusion breaking out. And all of a sudden the Philistines are on the move and 30,000 men that day, they died. And your Bible says at the conclusion of that verse, and they took the ark with them. They took that box. They took that gold. They took the power of God and the enemy had stolen what belonged to the children of God what an indictment that a life was not purified in private enough to the degree that they could defend the power of God can I announce to all of the worship leaders and all of the prophets and all of the intercessors and all of the preachers and everybody that stands on behalf of God as if God sent them please don't lose the glory in a battle don't let your faith fall don't let your don't let your worship begin to slip lie down don't let your hallelujah become mixed up with complaining because that is a recipe of losing the power of God I got a feeling that God is trying to reintroduce himself to you as you find yourself behind closed doors without anybody to play the kind of tune necessary for you to tap your feet and experience him here is what I need you to do right now while there's nobody moving this moment nobody's doing anything in your home hit the share button but I want you to practice and make sure that you become acquainted with Jehovah that's what happened to Hophni and Phineas. they did not know Jehovah and because they did not know him they did not understand what they should not come into contact with that is what a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ does for you Jesus will not only tell you that he loves you but he'll tell you where you can't go and no you can't go back to the lounge and no you can't smoke that black and mild and no you can't keep dating like that and no you can't keep moving like no you can't keep cussing like that because the same mouth James says that you want to bless the Lord with you can't be cussing everybody out on a group chat hallelujah and so God says you got to know me a little bit more so that you know what grieves me so that you know what irritates me Eli did not understand what grieved God because he grew dim and the light began to go out because he knew a form of godliness you won't say amen but deny the power thereof what good is it to wear garments of holiness and the devil can walk up to you and strip you bare naked the devil is a liar what good is it to say that I can speak in the tongues of men and angels but when it comes time to strengthen yourself in your most holy language without a microphone in your hand you ain't got a war cry last night I was in my closet around midnight and I wasn't praying I took my shoes off and I started dancing and I looked for my band and they were all asleep and I looked for my worship leaders and nobody was singing and all of a sudden I put my own hands together and I said if it had not been for the Lord that is on my side where would I be I would have lost my mind my children would have been sick and not healed my heart would have been broken in despair but thanks be unto God see you think I'm preaching in public no honey this is nothing more than a recital from what I do in private I'm just letting you in on my devotional life that's where I get delivered I'm letting you in on my devotional life that's where I get my discipline I'm letting you in on my devotional life that's where I get my determination it has nothing to do with the bright lights gone are the days yeah where the preacher is more enamored with the microphone and the monitors than I am with the manifestation of the glory of God I don't need a full building to preach like my life depends on it I understand that if God be for me 
me yeah then there can be no one standing against me and there is no amen loud enough from a congregant that can give me that confidence I get that confidence by turning my face to the wall and saying if I die who gonna praise you like Brandon Clark if I get in a car accident and I stop breathing who gonna worship you with that kind of velocity I am a praiser that is put here on purpose who is, has a demand on a hallelujah because I can scream thank you Lord in the best of them and in the worst of them there is the power of a desert take eight seconds lift your hands and give your God a private praise hurry up come on I said take eight seconds and give your father a private praise Here's what happens they 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 make themselves now and and the, and the ark is taken and it's and it's an awful thing sierra to, to be that close to god and have that many losses Whew. i i said it's an awful thing to have a hammond so loud and you still limping and frustrated and angry it's an awful thing to have the symbols crashing and you go home and you crash in your mindset it's an awful thing to listen to preaching and to shout and to dance but not take the revelation of what you have and you take it home and Hophna and Phineas they died on the battlefield Whoa, they died on the battlefield what they thought they were doing in their flesh could not resist the kind of attack that was coming against them they died in their flesh and then all of a sudden the Philistines take that ark of the covenant God's box they took God's throne the ark it is representation of the throne of God where he dwells and sits amongst his people and then all of a sudden man that ark began to turn on those Philistines tumors begin to break out people started dying because the enemy can't touch God's glory and live to tell the story about it all of a sudden that glory started turning on those who did not have clean hands who were not a part of covenant right who had not said that yes to God of Jehovah and he started turning on them and then all of a sudden they said do us a favor let's put the, the ark of God let's put that box let's put it in the temple where Dagon is you know who Dagon is Dagon was the one that the Philistines cried when the temple fell on Sam when they plucked Samuel Samson's eyes out and they put him out and they began to abuse him they did it all in the name of Dagon Dagon is represented by a small fish and many believe that small fish speaks to Dagon being the god of the storm which means that the god of the storm was now up against Jehovah and the Philistines assumed that the god of the storm was strong enough to take out this god in the box but can I tell you night number one Dagon fell over they put the glory of God next to Dagon and he came tumbling down and then night number two they put him next to Dagon on again but this time something shifted in the atmosphere this time when Dagon fell his hands fell and his head fell this time when Dagon fell his ability to curse fell and his hands for destruction fell I said this time when Dagon fell everything that made Dagon who he was fell at the power of God God bless you all nations members it's time to go but I just came to encourage you that whatever the enemy stole from you it's about time that he brings it back and here's what happened they said let's get the ark out of here because Dagon has fallen over and we're scared of the God of Jehovah they said get Dagon up out of here and take him down to Gath and they took him to Gath and there was still no peace and they said take Dagon and take him to another city and they took him to another city and there was still no peace and then finally the Philistines said take the power of God back to the place where it belongs I said take the power of God back to Israel and put him in his place and when they did here comes the glory and when they did here comes the restitution and when they did 
here comes restoration God bless you it's time to leave but I just came to announce to you that here comes the glory what the enemy thought he could steal God's about to make him give it back what the enemy thought he could take from you God's about to make him give it back and not only did they give the ark back but when they gave it back somebody said when you give it back make sure that you give them a gift for how else will we know that the plague is about to stop god bless you and have a good night the enemy is about to give you a gift that you didn't ask for your body's been sick here comes healing and here comes a new car you've been going out of your mind here comes some peace and here comes a saved cousin the enemy is about to give you a gift put it in the comments i'm about to get a gift back i didn't even know that you stole that from me but when the glory comes back i said when the glory comes back now you standing there too stuck up for me jump up off your sofa and announce to the atmosphere that the weapons of our warfare they're not carnal but they're mighty through god in the pulling down of strongholds down goes dagon down goes dagon down goes dagon the god of the storm is coming down i said down goes dagon it's coming down now here's how you pull it i said here's how you pull it i said here's how you pull it it ain't got nothing to do with you fighting anybody throw your hands up and say lord come on i said say lord send your glory send your power send your anointing and down goes Dagon. i'm gonna give you six seconds to announce right now do me a favor everybody in your house grab them by one hand hurry up come on grab them by one hand come on just squeeze them hold that hand here's what we're about to do we are about to get the glory back you hear me you have been fighting for your life you have been fussing you have been irritated and there is a sound that's about to come out of you that is about to remind the enemy where the glory goes and those philistines they returned the glory and they didn't just give the glory back they gifted some things back too here is my assignment all i'm gonna pray for you that over these next few moments as you're about to praise him on faith my prayer for you is that by the time you touch and agree you not look at your neighbor and say neighbor come on it's safe to talk to your neighbor you at home say neighbor i hope that you're not hoffney and phineas say, come on tell him i hope that you don't have those tendencies in you because this shout i'm about to give god is about to tell the devil down goes day god that the god of this storm that i've been in you've been in some storms and you've been in a hurricane and you've been in a rainy season and you've been saying how long you've been saying how long am i gonna be in this storm how long do i have to wait how long is it gonna happen but i believe that in the next 30 seconds down goes take on it happened overnight they put the glory next to the problem they put the glory next to the grief and by the time the sun came up i said by the time the sun came up take on had fallen down i want you to look at the saddest person that's in your house look at the person that don't want to be bothered and say give me 30 seconds down goes i said down i said down yeah yeah i said down goes Dagon. hurry up because i gotta go hurry up down goes Dagon. 
not standing next to a praiser, scoot up. He's about to come and dwell. Habitation. Glory! It's coming back! It's coming back! 
for joining us. We hope that you were impacted by this message. If you want to partner with us in giving, you can do so by texting A-N-W-A-M-E-M to 77977. For more opportunities to engage with us, you can do so by joining us virtually for service on Sundays at 7 a.m., Saturdays at 9 a.m., and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. You can also join us for prayer and devotion Monday through Friday at 5 a.m. We're so grateful you were able to worship with us, and we hope to see you again next week.